Hey guys, good morning. I know you can't see me, but you can hear me. It is 5:11, and I'm heading to the craft fair. something <laughs> um let me move the lighting is really horrible right here uh, today is saturday the 12th today was my craft fair sitting on stuff <laughs> um i wanted to hop on here real fast because i'm super tired i only got a few hours of sleep last night because i had to stay up and do some stuff not about the craft fair just life stuff and um I had to do an errand for my sister, but anyways, it's not important. But, um, I wanted to just talk about the craft fair real fast, because I wanted to update you guys. I'm trying to get the camera straight. There you go. My hair looks crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, so I'll start with this morning. I got up at 5, because the craft fair was about a 40-minute drive from my house. So, I got up and drove all the way there <laughs> in the dark. And it was a little rainy on the way there, not bad. But by the time I got there, it wasn't raining anymore. And it was super cold. <laughs> and um, I got there before anyone else. And then uh, another woman showed up. So we went in and we were setting up our tables in our spots. And I got a pretty good spot. I didn't get it along the wall. I got in the middle. You know, there's it was this rectangle building. There's two of them, two buildings. We I was in the second building. And um, so it was like a U-shape of people around the wall. And then there was three people in the middle and I was one of the people in the middle and I liked that because I was I had more space to sit up and I had more opportunity for people to see my stuff because you know they would walk around to me twice um going around the loop <laughs> but um so I was happy with my placement but I got there and I set up my table and um I put in a clip or I will put in a clip or pictures or something of uh, my first table set up um that's how it looked when I first set it up. And as stuff sold, I, uh, you know, replaced it with stuff that I had under the table. But, um, yeah, so I got there early, like I said, and, I, and then I just sat there and I crocheted. I actually made a cowl while sitting there. This is also, this is a Red Heart, I forget what it's called, Colorscapes or something like that. I can't remember now. It's the same yarn I've been using for these cowls. It's just a blue color, which I will tell you what color it is in no catch name because I forgot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I wanted to take an easy sewing project, or sewing, <laughs> crochet project um, that I could use make without a pattern. And actually made it and, and finished it. And this is an entire skein of that. When I got done with it, the, uh, the ribbing, I had, like, that much yarn left. So I wove in all the ends and everything. I completely finished it at the craft fair. And I just folded it up and put it in my bag. And I had another ball of this in case I wanted to make another one. But by the time that I got done with this, the cra uh, it was starting. So I didn't crochet, um, obviously, while people was there because I wanted to. I stood up a lot. And um, I only sat down when there was no one in there but the vendors. I would sit down. But as customers came in, I would stand back up so that um, I could engage with people and talk to them and, you know, smile at them and all that stuff. And that seemed to work because um, I was the only 100% crochet booth. Um, there were a few other booths with crochet. There was one woman diagonal to me. She had soaps and stuff like that. And then she had crocheted um, cloths like, um, you know, like bath cloths, you know, <laughs> that you would use on your body, not your dishes. That's what I'm trying to say. She was selling them for really cheap too. She was selling them three for five dollars. And I was like, that's super cheap, you know. It's too cheap, I think. <laughs> but whatever. She said that she did, She told me that she doesn't really crochet. That's all she makes is those just to go with her soap. So, you know, whatever floats her boat. Let me 
position. And then there was another woman in the first building that um, had a bunch of stuff, but not crochet stuff, just other stuff. And she also had the dish towels with the crochet tops. So I was the only booth with a ton of crochet stuff and the only one with amigurumis. I was really the only booth in the whole entire thing with the kids stuff. So that was a bonus. <laughs> and this was a fundraiser for a family um, charity. So there were a lot of families there with kids. So that's one thing that helped me, I think, get a lot of sales. Uh, it's because there were so many kids there and I was the only one with stuff for kids. But most of the other booths were... And I don't want to inf offend anyone who does other crafts, but they were the generic crafts that everybody does now. Like they had all kinds of fabric pumpkins, which are beautiful, but everybody had them. And they had all of the, the jar crafts and wreaths like crazy. Every booth had wreaths. But I think when you go into a craft fair, you need to try to think outside the box and take something that other people aren't likely to have. Like that was one thing that was in my favor during this craft fair was that I was the only person with amigurumi toys. Uh, everybody else had almost similar themes to their, their booths. And um, there were some direct sales. There was paparazzi, uh, color street, and some kind of lotion person. I don't know. I don't know anything about stuff like that. And uh, there were three uh, leather. I don't know if it was real leather, but they said leather. Um, jewelry tables. And there were different people. But all their stuff looked the same. So I don't know. I don't. And from in my, the room that I was in, there were seven vendors, I think. And out of all of us, I made the most sales. One lady didn't make any sales at all. The woman that was right beside me. The only thing she had in her entire booth was quilt tops. Like, it wasn't even whole quilts. It was just quilt tops. She didn't sell anything that I noticed. And then everybody else sold a couple of things. Um, but not a whole lot. And I think it's because everybody, so many booths were so similar. And we were in the second building, so by the time people got to our building, they had already bought <laughs> the, almost the same things in the first building. And um, that's something I learned today, <laughs> is to definitely try to think outside the box when it comes to your products to make things that people aren't likely to see in other people's booths. So, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, my first sale was a little girl. <laughs> she was actually, this the fundraiser, um, the foundation is called the Paisley Foundation, and it's named after a little girl named Paisley who uh, was born still stillbirth so she was uh born deceased and her, so her parents made the foundation and she the little girl that made my that bought my first thing was the sister to paisley um so she bought my scraps the eagle or not eagle scraps the seagull <laughs> i said eagle um uh, pattern she really liked it so that was my first thing so was my scraps and i had him listed for 15 dollars, and i kept track of everything she also bought something else. Oh yeah, a little chicken. If I can find pictures of these products, I will pop them up somewhere. And yeah. So scraps sold for $15 and my little chicken sold for 5 And then I did make pretty consistent sales um, throughout the day. It started at 10 and ended at 4 So it's 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. Was it really seven hours? I don't, it didn't feel like seven hours. I can't believe I sat there for like nine hours because I got there early. Anyways, <laughs> um, I made pretty decent sales uh, all day. I did four transactions on my square reader and it worked fine. I was so scared it was not going to work or um, I said my signal was going to be bad or something. But I did um, four transactions through that. And then the rest of them were cash, which I was glad for. I took $100 with me, by the way. I went to the bank and got $30 in ones. And I got uh, 15, 14 fives. 30 ones and 14 fives. Yeah, and it was $100. Um, let's see here. And then, like I said, I had a ton of people um, looking at everything and picking up stuff and squishing it and asking me questions and stuff. And uh, a lot of people left to look at other things and then they did come back and buy something. 
uh, and I had a lot of people asking questions about if I made this or that and uh, I took notes <laughs> every time someone asked me about a certain thing I wrote it down and I got asked for unicorns which I didn't make it <laughs> I got asked for the Hulk and other um, Marvel like boy characters uh, someone wanted a giraffe which I had a giraffe but they wanted one that had the spots on it and I had people ask me about monkeys and the cow that I took I'll pop up a picture or something <laughs> uh, he was super duper popular I had a ton of people look at him pick him up and you know check him out and all that and a bunch of people saying that they might come back and buy him and one of them was the woman who was running it she said that if no one bought it by the end of the day she would buy it but um towards the end of it a pregnant lady came in and uh she had a big old pregnant belly and she wanted it because uh they're doing the nursery to their babies uh, you know their baby's nursery in a barnyard thing so she bought the cow for it and i thought that was cool but um she came back later <laughs> after that asked to see if i had any other barnyard animals she was wanting a pig i think and i didn't i had a pig pillow but not like a pig amigurumi and I, all these people who wanted stuff, I gave them business cards and told them how they could contact me. And told them to just, you know, shoot me a message and I will, you know, make them something. But I wrote down notes to uh, definitely make more cows next time and to make the little pattern. Because the same pattern has a big amigurumi and a little one. So I think next time I will make a few big ones and a few little ones. Because so many people looked at that cow. And, uh, yeah, so now I'm going to go through the list of everything that sold. And there's in no particular order. But the little octopi that everybody was making, the little tiny ones, I took two, four, six, eight, and I sold, actually I forgot to mark one out. I sold one, two, I sold seven of them. I sold all but one. <laughs> and then I took my little chickens, which I'll try to pop up if I can find it. And I took five and I sold four. And both of those were five dollars each, the octopuses and the chickens and I know my prices might seem low to some people but um, from experience of selling stuff to people um, people in my area aren't willing to pay more for amigurumi and then I made two of the little bees and those are actually popular and I had someone come back later and ask if I had more bees uh, so I only took two of them and I sold them for eight dollars each I took uh, my little pumpkin bags from Jada and Stitches I sold one of those to a little girl um, she took forever to pick out what she wanted. Her um, grandma was there by letting her pick out something. And she picked up every single thing I had and squished it and checked it out and everything. And she finally decided to get a pumpkin bag. And then I took my two Norwals that were made out of Yarnby Urban Chic, I think it is. I love that yarn, but it, a lot of it discontinued recently. And the colorway was like aqua, and it's really pretty blue, and it's got some bright colors in the middle of it. I took two Norwals made with that, and they both sold. Uh, I took two turtles, Hugo the turtle, um, and one of them sold for $15. I haven't been telling the price, I'm sorry. The pumpkin bag was $5. The Norwals were $10 each. And the turtle was $15. And then one of my furry sheeps that I made recently, lambs, I sold one of those for $10. And I'm pretty proud of this one. My hocus, um, uh, my green hocus sold someone bought him for ten dollars and I thought that was so cool that because it was a pattern that I designed and then made and then someone bought it and she said that she wanted to use it in her house for a Halloween decoration so I thought that was cool and then the cow sold for twenty five dollars that was my most expensive thing that sold and then the seagull was fifteen and um, I took four jellyfish one sold for ten dollars I took um, I made little cupcakes recently out of the book that I got, Whimsical Stitches or something like that, and one of the little ones sold for five dollars. Uh, I met, had a little amigurumi of um, Hedwig the Owl off of Harry Potter. It sold for ten dollars. And then another one that I'm proud of, my, oh I can't say this one, my pattern I haven't released yet <laughs> that I designed and made myself, uh, sold for eight dollars. And then I had a little tiny amigurumi pumpkin that I made. Um, when I made my pattern for pumpkins, I made a little tiny one just to film or just to take pictures of how to cinch it 
Um, so I made a little tiny one so it was quicker. And it sold for $3. So I sold 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 items, I think, all together. And I made, after the four square um, transaction fees, because I take a little bit out, um, they took a little over $3, like $3.20 something cents. So after that, I made, I brought home $192. So I'm excited about that. I only paid twenty five dollars for the booth, so it's like I, I um, brought home one hundred and sixty seven, and I would have brought home a dollar more, but I accidentally gave someone a dollar more change. And by the time I realized it, it was too late, and I didn't really mind because it was just a dollar. They bought thirteen dollars worth of stuff, and I gave them an eighty eight back instead of seven. But whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm fine with that. <laughs> but um. I'm pretty excited with that. I think I, I did way better than I thought I was going to do. I was super worried I wouldn't sell anything. And then, I, uh, like in my mind, I told myself I would be super happy if I made $50 because that would be my booth fee and then $25. <laughs> but, um, so I made $192 today. That's pretty cool. And uh, I'm super excited about that. <laughs> Devin's excited about that. We're all happy about it. Um, I know some people... Um, like all the stuff they buy for it, they take that out of what they brought home. The only reason I'm not doing that is because all the stuff that I bought for the craft fair uh, have other purposes. Like I'm going to use the tables. I've already been using them like crazy for other stuff. And I'll continue using them for other stuff. And for more craft fairs. And the same goes for um, my bags. I still have a ton of bags left I'm going to be using. So I don't take the entire purchase price out of this one craft fair. Because I'm going to be using them for a long time to come. So, to me, today, I made $167 profit because I only take out my $25 table fee. And that $25 went straight to the foundation today. Um, they said that every dollar they earned through the vendor fees and through donations and through the sale of the foods that they were selling. They had all kinds of food there to, sell, to buy. All 100% of that goes into the foundation, which the foundation... Um, helps families financially with medical bills and just support and also with like therapy and stuff when they have a baby die early uh infant loss or SIDS or anything like that up to three years old so um that's cool they even pay for their own advertising and everything out of pocket and uh, they don't use the money they earn through the fund the fundraisers for that they actually pay for it themselves which is cool but anyways all that to say that I'm super happy that the way the craft fair turned out. I was nervous um, leading up to it just because I kept feeling like I didn't have enough stuff. And um, I was afraid I wasn't going to sell anything. I was afraid the square was going to mess up. But once I actually got there, I was fine. I set up my table and it looked good. And I had a whole bunch of amigurumi under the table to replace stuff as it sold. And that's what I did the whole day. Every time someone bought something and walked away, I would put something out out put something else out and anytime someone would come through especially with kids and um you know play with stuff and move it around I would after they walked off I would go around and straighten it back up make it look pretty again and I handed out a ton of business cards I'm gonna show you something in a second with that <laughs> and um I think overall it was a good experience uh I'm excited about it and I do look forward to doing another one but it won't be until next year I want to do a Christmas one but not this year because I don't have time to prepare for it. But I think a Christmas one would be fun because I imagine they do really well. But for business cards, I looked up and I'll have to link it below because I can't remember. I wanted to buy a business card holder and I couldn't find one. Any other day I would find one because I've seen them before. But when I'm actually looking for it, I couldn't find one. So I crocheted one. <laughs> it's just like a little bowl. And I had a bunch of business cards set in it and people took from it. So it was cool. I love these two colors. This is... um bright pink and bright yellow or something like that I don't know super pink and yellow I mix them together a lot but um the negatives of today's craft fair was uh one kids <laughs> uh, even though kids are what got my got me my most sales they were super annoying <laughs> Little kids all the way up to teenagers, they would pick up every little thing and play with it. And this, these, there was these two teenage girls 
that stood there for like 20 minutes playing with every single thing and they didn't even buy anything they just played with everything and wasted time just standing there messing around with everything and then left that was annoying <laughs> that's really annoying just because it's like well just you know if you're gonna buy something buy something if you're not just go ahead and walk on don't just hang out there mm, what else was a negative i was trying to think of other negatives i don't think there were any other negatives just kids being annoying i guess <laughs> but that's just normal for kids i guess um, I had a funny thing happen. <laughs> my sister came. I was by myself until about noon. And then my sister came. Uh, she had to wait for her husband to get out of training or something like that. Uh, firefighter stuff. And um, so he dropped her off. And she sat with me just because, you know, I didn't want to be alone the whole time. But um, we were sitting there and this little boy came up. Little, like Jesse's age. He's like three. And he had been there earlier with his brothers. His, their dad and mom were vendors also in the front building with like wooden signs and there were four of them <laughs> four little boys and uh, they had bought some of the uh, the uh octopi and like a rocket ship and maybe a bee did i sell a rocket ship i bet i've heard them work that because i'm pretty sure one of those boys got one of those i don't remember but um it doesn't matter <laughs> um he came up by himself and I, was, I seen him come up. I was looking at him. And he was looking at my crochet spiders. And then he just grabbed two of them. And took off with them. And I was like. I was shocked at first. And then my sister. She hopped up. And she said. Hey. She said. Little boy. Stop. <laughs> and it was so funny. He stopped and turned around. And I don't think he realized that he was stealing. You know. He's just. He was little. He's like three. And uh, we were all laughing at him. And she went to him. And she was like. You can't take those baby. And oh, she took them from him. And. She stood there and talked to him for a minute. I don't know what she all said because she was away from me. But um, we were all laughing. Us, all the vendors and all that were just laughing because it was so funny that he just grabbed him and took off with him. But um, she went and talked to his dad. And what it was is uh, his brothers said that they lost their octopuses. But what I, what I think it was is that they were playing with them and they didn't want the little brother to be playing with them. So he just thought, well, I'll just go get some more. <laughs> and uh, he just came back and got some more. So, uh, you know, it, it wasn't like, I didn't feel bad about it. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> but, um, a lot of people loved the Harry Potter characters. But the only one that sold was Hedwig, the owl. But I had two people take pictures of them. <laughs> ask if they could take pictures. And, um, people complimented everything. And it was really cool to have so many, like, you know, people complimenting me. I had two people ask about my project bags. <laughs> but I didn't have any to take because everybody bought them already. Which I appreciate, but it's just funny. Um, that people asked about them. So, I, I think if I do another craft fair anytime soon, I might set aside some bags just specifically to take to it. I don't know. But yeah, I'm trying to think if I forgot anything else. It was a nice day. It was supposed to rain, but it ended up being sunny. It was cold. It stayed in the 50s all day. But it was sunny, so, um, it wasn't horrible and I actually had like one of my bouts of high blood pressure <laughs> I had a really bad headache and I was nauseous and I was shaky and um I was burning up my I flushed real bad and I was actually fanning myself while everybody else was wearing jackets and snuggled up like this um I gotta get that fixed I've been working on it a little bit and I gotta make a doctor appointment and get blood work on like jazz but um yeah it turned out to be a good day uh we left a smidge early just because everybody else was leaving Everybody else in my building was packing up. So I was like, well, I'm just going to go ahead and pack up too. Because I don't want to be the only building sitting here. And actually, me and my sister had everything packed up. And was getting ready to take it to the car. And an another family came through with a little girl. And she, they were like, oh no, oh no. Because uh, the little girl had already been through. And she seen something she wanted. And uh, they asked if they could dig through my bag. Because I have all my amigurumis in a big bag. So I let them. And uh, she picked out a jellyfish. She bought the jellyfish. A pink and white one. And, uh. Turned out my sister knew one of them, so they talked. And that lady that she knows wants a cow, so I guess I'll be making her a cow <laughs> uh, eventually. I don't know. I'll have to get the details. But yeah, I also learned today that I need to make a Facebook page for my No Kitchen Name animals, you know, my crochet part of No Kitchen Name. And I'm going to have to figure out how to put uh, my Amigurum is on Etsy. I mean, like, I know how to do it, but I need to figure out the shipping. That's the only thing that's kept me from putting amigurumis on there before now because, 
you know, if I make a I'm, I'm going to be this big, I'm going to have to find a box that will fit it and keep the shipping as low as possible because I'm not going to do the free shipping thing. <laughs> That's stupid. I don't care if I'm not on the first page. People can look me up by my name. <laughs> I'm not going to give away my items for with free shipping because if I sell something for $20 and the shipping is $15, that's only $5. <laughs> so, um, I'm not doing that. Nope. That's not happening. Uh, I have to figure out how to make my costs, my shipping costs as low as possible for the people who's buying. But also, it would up my supplies costs because I'd have to buy boxes and I'd have to buy paper or something to fill in the air so that the items not moving around and getting all squished up uh, in the mail. That's the only reason I've not been trying to sell stuff, crochet stuff on a line because it's a lot easier because my bags, they're just fabric. I just fold them and put them in an envelope and send them. It doesn't matter if they get smushed because they're already flat. But like Emma Grimmie, sometimes, you know, it'll misshape them and then the person who bought them may not know how to shape them back the right way. So I have to figure all that stuff out first. I don't mind selling local at all because I can meet people uh, to do, you know, exchanges and stuff. But I do need to make a Facebook page, I guess, <laughs> and uh, start trying to sell my amigurumi. I did sell a lot. I sold 20-something items, so that's 20-something things I didn't have to bring home. But I still have a lot in there <laughs> that I gotta um, do something with. It's, it's just in the bag now, in there, <laughs> sitting. And yeah. So that was my first craft fair. I think I said everything I need to say. I'm excited. I made a really good profit, I think. Um, I wasn't expecting to bring home almost $200. Uh, I was, I, like I said, I would have been happy with 50 But uh, 200 is a lot better than 50 <laughs> And um, I just felt sorry for all the other people around me because they weren't getting very many sales at all. And... Um, but I took everybody's advice that I talked to. I stood up as much as I could and engaged with people and um, kept restocking. And I did change out my tablecloth like everybody suggested. And yeah, I drank a lot of water. <laughs> I wasn't dehydrated when I was sick. It was just my blood pressure just randomly gets real high and um, affects me you know, my body. But um I stayed hydrated. I ate some snacks. My sister brought some beef jerky. Mm. And I ate some um, gardettos, I think, or whatever, the little bread things. Uh, I wasn't super hungry because uh, usually when I'm out and about and doing stuff, I don't get hungry. Uh, I ate when I came home, so I'm good. Tomorrow, we're going to go to Devin's dad's for breakfast. That's actually when I'm going to edit this video. I'm filming it tonight, but I'm going to edit it and upload it tomorrow. I'm not worried about it tonight because I'm tired <laughs> and um we're gonna go to the pumpkin patch tomorrow for sure I want to go to Nashville um because I want to go see the pumpkins but I don't want to go to Nashville because I don't want to drive to Nashville and uh drive home and all that stuff I don't know I'll make up my mind tomorrow for sure but I'm for sure we're for sure going to the pumpkin patch unless it rains um I don't think it's supposed to rain though and we gotta find Jesse a jacket because <laughs> we pulled out his jacket from the closet and it's a little too little. We went and bought him some new pants because his pants were just a smidge, you know, like his ankles were hanging out. And uh, so we went and got him some 4T pants because now he's in 4T pants. And he still wears a 3T top, so he's 3T, 4T. <laughs> and we got him a pair of boots because his little boots from last year were too small. And uh, so we got him a new pair of boots so that if it's cold and wet, his little feet are okay. He can wear tennis shoes, you know, all the other days, but when it's wet, he needs to wear uh, waterproof, thicker shoes. So, uh, we're getting ready for colder weather and holidays that come along with it. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so glad that the craft fair is over because now I can start working on things I want to work on. Like, I want to finish my Christmas tree skirt because uh, I'm going to need it soon. <laughs> And I've got a bunch of whips in there that I'm going to make a video, mm, maybe Monday or Tuesday, about if I'm going to finish your frog, I think I'll call it finish your frog, <laughs> and um, go through my whips and declutter it, because you guys have seen the mound of whips in there, I need to do something about that, I need to address that situation. But, um, yeah, I got Devin to go through his side of the closet, 
and he emptied it out a lot and we got rid of all the wire hangers well we took them out they're still in the living room or kitchen or somewhere because uh i wanted to look up things i could use them for because people suggested suggested different crafts and stuff so i want to kind of see if there's something cool i can make before i donate them if not i'll just donate them uh i think that's everything i've been talking for 30 minutes <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go because it's been 30 minutes and I've been talking and I'm tired and, and there's already some other clips that I took that will be around this one. So I will see you guys later today for Vlogtober 13, yeah, uh, which will be the pumpkin patch, hopefully, if it doesn't rain. Bye guys.